Second day. Come, Father of the poor. Come, treasures which endure. Come, light of all that live. The gift of wisdom. Embodying all the other gifts, as charity embraces all the other virtues, wisdom is the most perfect of the gifts. Of wisdom it is written, All good things came to me with her, and innumerable riches through her hands. It is the gift of wisdom that strengthens our faith, fortifies hope, perfects charity, and promotes the practice of virtue in the highest degree. Wisdom enlightens the mind to discern and to relish things divine, in the appreciation of which earthly joys lose their savor, while the cross of Christ yields a divine sweetness according to the words of the Savior. Take up thy cross and follow me, for my yoke is sweet and my burden light. Let us pray. Come, O Spirit of wisdom, and reveal to my soul the mysteries of heavenly things, their exceeding greatness, power, and beauty. Teach me to love them above and beyond all the passing joys and satisfactions of earth. Help me to attain them and possess them forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Father will give you another to befriend you, one who is to dwell continually with you forever. It is the truth-giving Spirit, for whom the world can find no room, because it cannot see him, cannot recognize him. But you are to recognize him. He will be continually at your side. Nay, he will be in you. He will be in you. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us has now become possible in the completion of the mystery of the Ascension that we just celebrated two days ago. Not a mere feeling, nor a vague power that would assist us, but the third person of the Divine Trinity, true God, almighty, perfect, and eternal God, dwelling now in us. Saint Bonaventure wrote, If you wish to have the love of the Son, and the originated principle, and of the gift that is the Holy Spirit, dispose yourself for grace. Disposing oneself to grace means for the soul to be in the proper condition, the proper dispositions, in order to receive God's very own life. And this life cannot, in any case, dwell in us alongside death. Sin, mortal sin, cannot allow the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us, and this prerequisite, being in the state of grace, must be recalled to our attention before moving forward in our presentation of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. As we know, now we received the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not on the day of our confirmation, as we might think, but on the day of our baptism, where like a little seed planted in our souls, the Holy Spirit, sanctifying grace, has been given to us. And the seed can now flourish and bloom with the sacrament of confirmation. Acipe sal sapientiae, propitiatio sit tibi in vitam eternam. Receive the salt of wisdom. Let it be to thee a token of mercy unto everlasting life. May it make your way easy to eternal life. You have recognized here the words pronounced by the priest when imposing the exercised and blessed salt as part of the ritual of our baptism. Already then, we have a mention of the most important gift of the Holy Spirit, wisdom. But first, let's define what a gift of the Holy Spirit is. St. Thomas Aquinas says, It is manifest that human virtues perfect men according as it is natural for him to be moved by his reason in his interior and exterior actions, as we can see when using natural prudence, for instance, to avoid a danger, in knowing and analyzing the potential or real elements, circumstances, and such that might cause the danger, or practical wisdom, as for the wise men, 
to choose the best means to attain the right ends. And again, for that, he needs to know what are the causes that will allow him to attain this end, the right end. Consequently, man needs yet higher perfections, whereby to be disposed to be moved by God, continues St. Thomas. These perfections are called gifts, not only because they are infused in our soul by God, but also because by them man is disposed to become amenable to the divine inspiration, capable of attaining his ultimate goal, eternal happiness, in using the proper means, in receiving the proper supernatural helps. He needs to attain an end which is by itself beyond, way beyond his natural faculties, if not once again uplifted by God to the level of supernature now. Spiritual authors say that as grace grows, these gifts become more active and the Holy Spirit takes a greater role in the direction of our lives. But it would be sheer presumption to expect or wait for the Holy Spirit to lead us in this manner if we did not strive energetically to exercise the infused virtues. Acibe sal sapiencie, receive the salt of wisdom. Sapiencie, composed of two words, we can find the root of the word sapere et sciencia. Sapere, to know but also to taste. And sciencia, science or knowledge. So the virtue of wisdom, sapiencia, then is a special kind of knowledge that judges of the highest and most fundamental of all causes, a science that has for very object or subject God himself and his divine plan of salvation for humankind. St. Thomas explains that the gift of wisdom as one of the three intellectual virtues, in as much as they are helps given to us to perfect or slow to perfect our, our slow and simple human intellect, the gift of wisdom also flows from charity, the greatest of all virtues. So double movement here, double movement in the gift of wisdom. To know the truth in knowing the causes of all causes, God himself, and to love the good, the source of all goodness, again, God himself. Veritatem in caritate. Truth in charity could be the perfect definition for the gift of wisdom, which is the motto of our dear institute, following St. Paul's philosophy and theology. So to conclude, I cannot but think of the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, during this month of May dedicated to our beloved mother. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart from her intelligence to her pierced heart. She kept and pondered all knowledge she had received from Christ. And not only did she meditate and contemplate all these truths, but placed them back in her heart. Source of love. And as we know, the principle of love is found in our will, one of the two human faculties along with the intellect. Once again, we find our two faculties, intellect and will. So she kept them in her mind first and acted second, acted upon them in a perfect harmony with the will of God. And this is why she could say, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Joy as this emotion that we experience when we attain what we love, what we have been longing for once we possess it, true joy comes from it. So the gift of wisdom that helps us attain union with God will bring true joy with it. Seat of wisdom, pray for us. Cause of our joy, pray for us. And let us pray the Holy Spirit once again that he might fill our hearts with this gift 
and our heart and mind with this gift of wisdom as we approach the Feast of Pentecost. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created, and you shall renew the faith of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Act of Consecration to the Holy Ghost On my knees, before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, I offer myself, soul and body, to Thee, Eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of Thy purity, the unerring keenness of Thy justice, and the might of Thy love. Thou art the strength and the light of my soul. In thee I live and move and am. I desire never to grieve thee by unfaithfulness to grace, and I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin against thee. Mercifully guard my every thought, and grant that I may always watch for thy light, and listen to thy voice, and follow thy gracious inspirations. I cling to thee and give myself to thee, and ask thee by thy compassion to watch over me in my weakness. Holding the pierced feet of Jesus, and looking at his five wounds, and trusting in his precious blood, and adoring his open side and stricken heart, I implore thee, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, so to keep me in thy grace, that I may never sin against thee. Give me grace, O Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Father and the Son, to say to thee always and everywhere, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Amen. Prayer for the Seven Gifts of the Holy Ghost O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the Holy Ghost to finish thy work in the souls of thine apostles and disciples, deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of thy grace and thy love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom, that I may despise the perishable things of this world and aspire only after the things that are eternal. The spirit of understanding, to enlighten my mind, with the light of thy divine truth. The spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven. The spirit of fortitude, that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation. The spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints. The spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable. The spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence toward God and may dread in any way to displease Him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of Thy true disciples 
and animate me in all things with thy spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.